In this tutorial, I'm going to give you an introduction on how to make a graph from a set of data. So the first thing we need is to create some data. We'll start with the date. And now here, a neat little trick is to select the date that we just created. And in the bottom right hand corner, click that and drag down. And now you'll notice that every cell underneath the original cell has had one day added to the date. That's just a uh, a neat little thing to save some time. Now I'm just entering random data points. Now that you have a set of data, what you need to do is highlight all of that by clicking and dragging the mouse. Go up to the menu where it says Insert, click that, and then click Chart. If Chart does not appear for you, click the two arrows pointing down, and then you'll find Chart right there, and click it. Now, what appears here is the Chart Wizard. This is what will help you actually make your chart. On the first step, you have a, a bunch of different selections of what type of chart you can make. Bar chart, line chart, pie chart, etc. You can even make custom charts over here on the Custom Types tab so you can you have a lot of different options depending on the type of data you want to graph <coughs> so we'll start with the column and we'll choose the default subtype if you'd like you can choose a 3d graph or one of these other styles on this screen what you want to do is make sure that the data here corresponds with the data you want to graph so in the, on the data range tab first make sure that data range down here is everything that you selected when you clicked chart. So here it says sheet 1 cell A1 to C6. A1 where it says date, C6 where it says 15. So that's correct. Now choose what type of chart you like. Columns will display the type of graph you see right here or click rows. It will display the graph you see here. So it changes how the data is grouped here by the widget A or widget B and in columns with the date on the bottom. So we'll keep it on columns and move to the series tab. On this tab you want to make sure that the actual numbers graphed are correct. When you highlighted everything Microsoft pretty much guessed what you wanted the graph to look like and they do oftentimes get it right but you just want to make sure. So you have widget A here <coughs> and now we'll start off with a name. The name for this series came from this cell, sheet B1. And by the way, sheet 1 is just the name of the tab, and the default tab when you open up Excel is sheet 1. So cell B1 is where it gets its name. B1 says widget A. If you change this, and you can change it by deleting the 1 and say entering 2, the name will display whatever is in the cell that it corresponds to. So here it corresponds to the cell with the number 2, so the series name is now 2. So that's all that that means. If you need to change the name, you can either delete it and enter it. So delete 1 and put 2 in, or you can click the button on the right here. Now if you click that, you can select your data by highlighting. So first of all, we'll delete that and highlight cell B1. Now you can either hit enter or click this button at the top. And there you go, it says sheet B1. So the next thing you want to make sure is that the values for widget A correspond with the values underneath widget A that you would like to graph. So it says here B2 to B6. And as you can see on the graph, B2 to B6, I mean on the data table, B2 to B6 corresponds with the data for widget A. So that's correct. You can change that just like you change the name if you need to. The last thing to make sure is that the category x-axis labels correspond with what you want on this bottom line here. So we want the date. And as you can see, the date is here, so that's good. If it was incorrect, you could delete this data and enter whatever else you needed to put in here. So you could enter the correct cell references. Now, make sure that widget B has the correct data as well. And it does have everything correct. One other thing to note, if you do click in these uh, this text box area, a little 
a square should appear around the cell, and it sometimes does that. So we'll go next. On this step, you can choose how you want to format your graph, or just a few little things to change with formatting, nothing too specific. So we'll go ahead and add a title. That's on the title tab. And there you see it says widgets now above the graph. You can add category x-axis and y-axis names and values. For the axis tab, here you can add or remove the axis, so you can take them off, keep them on. You have the grid lines tab. That'll, that uh, controls the lines in the back here that you see, the black lines. You can take them off, or you can add many of them. You can also put them on the x-axis, so they'll go up and down. For us, we'll take them off. Next tab is the legend tab. What this allows you to do is control this little box here that says widget A and widget B. We can take it off by unchecking this box, or we can leave it on and we can change where it's located, at the bottom, corner, top, right, or left. We will leave it at the right for now. And now let's go to data labels. Here is where you can actually put labels within the chart to explain it a little bit better. So since we took the grid lines off, we may, we may not know if this is 14 or 15. We're not sure. So we can check the value box, and it tells you this is 14. That's 11, 12. So it can help you to actually read the chart. You can also add a category name and a series name. But as you can see, it gets cluttered pretty quickly. So you might just want to say keep the value or just have category name, just one of them. The next tab is the data table. And the data table will represent everything that you're graphing here in a table format. So it looks like that. Oftentimes you don't need to have the show data table box checked because you already have data listed somewhere else in Excel. So once you've gotten that to your liking, click Next. And the final step is to choose where you want to save the chart. You can save it as a new sheet. And saving it as a new sheet will put it on a new tab within Excel and that will put the graph or the chart on the entire tab, so that's the only thing that will be located there. If you put it as an object in, it'll be a graph or a chart within a current sheet. So you can put it within sheet 1, sheet 2, or sheet 3. Our data is in sheet 1, so we'll keep it in sheet 1. Another benefit of putting it as an object in is that we could put as many charts as we'd like on one sheet here. So we could have six different charts or graphs next to each other here. Now let's click finish, and you see we've got a chart. It's a little bit small, so how you change that is once you've clicked the chart, go to these black little blocks, click them and drag them, and you can expand your chart. Now, if you want to get back to the chart options, all you have to do is click your chart, and then right click in the white space anywhere, and click chart options. And now you are back here. So let's go ahead and take off the legend because it's a little bit big. And we'll take off the titles. And there we go. So that's how you make a graph in Excel.